Okay, so unit eight, section five, in, we're in introducing you to radians, and we're gonna we're gonna get a definition of radians, and then we're gonna work with it and do the same things we did with uh, degrees. Um, so I'm gonna read what's here. Just for the last few days, we've been working with angles using degree measure. However, degrees do not take into account the size of the radius of the circle and therefore do not give us the length of the arc associated with the angle. And you may remember in Math 2, it's been a while, I know, but finding arc length. It's around this time of the year in, in Math 2, I'm teaching that right now. But arc length is a part of your circumference of the circle. So it's like, uh, you know, just finding the distance around that circle from one point to another point. Okay. Um, so radian measure for angles does take this into account. Um, so if you're working in radians, uh, the, the length of your arc is equal to the radius times the radian measure. Um, and so the radian measure is defined as your your arc length divided by the radius, where s is the length of the arc intercepted by the angle, r is the radius for the circle associated with the angle. So it has a little more meaning when we're working with radians than if we were working with degrees. Degrees does not have that property where radians do, and so it's a little more useful to work with. Um, since radian measure is new for us, we need to relate it to degrees to be able to convert back and forth. Um, and we're dealing with the circle, and we know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. In the unit circle, the radius is always equal to 1. That's what we mean by a unit circle. Uh, so the circumference of that circle is just 2 pi. Because if you plug in 1 for radius into that um, circumference formula, that's where that's, where that's coming from. Um, and so we have this relationship between degrees and radians. 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. And if you cut both those sides in half, here's the one I like to use. 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. Okay. And so we have a way to equate one to the other, right? It'd be like saying uh, 12 inches equals one foot, right? That's kind of what we have here. We have 180 radians equals pi. So 180 degrees equals pi radians. So because of that, um, if we're finding, so now all these are going to be given to you in radians, and if we're uh, sketching an angle in standard position, often radians are going to be given to you in fraction form, and uh, and when we compare fractions, you can only compare fractions if they have a common denominator. Right, um, so here's zero degrees, but it's also zero radians. And if I just, I just tend to focus on the x-axis. If I go a half circle, we go 180 degrees, which we just said is pi radians. But think of it as a fraction, so it's really pi over one, right? And we want to find out where six pi over five radians is. Well. I have a fraction over 1. That's a fraction with a denominator 5. And in order to make a comparison, I need a common denominator. So I'm going to change pi over 1 to something over 5. Remember how to change a denominator? You multiply top and bottom by whatever you wish. In this case, 5. So pi over 1 is the same thing as 5 pi over 5. And now we can make a comparison. 6 pi over 5, is that more than a half circle? Yeah, because 6 pi over 5 is bigger than 5 pi over 5. Well, should we be in quadrant 3 or should I keep going to quadrant 4? How far past, right? And 360 degrees is how many radians? 2 pi. And if you change that to a fraction over 5, right, this is 2 pi over 1. If I multiply top and bottom by 5, I'd end up with 10 pi over 5. And so we can think of it this way. Well, 6 pi over 5 is closer to 5 pi over 5 
than it is to 10 pi over 5. And so we know for sure it's going to be in quadrant, um, quadrant 3. Okay. Um, so that's standard position. So it says sketch the angle in standard position. We did part A. Uh, part B says to identify the quadrant for the terminating ray. So we're doing that right here. Part B, we get uh, quadrant 3. And then part C says identify the reference angle. Now our reference angle is the positive difference between our terminating ray between 6 pi over 5 and our 5 pi over 5. And you can subtract or add if we want if you have a common denominator, and we already do. So here we want to subtract them. What's the difference between 6 pi over 5 and 5 pi over 5? 1 pi over 5. You just subtract the numerators. You leave the denominator 5, and you're going to go 6 minus 5, which is 1 pi over 5. Okay. So it's the same kind of work we're doing. We're just working with fractions and something that's maybe a little not as familiar to us, right? So let's try it again on the next one. 5 pi over 9, so here's 0. Here's pi, which is, I'm going to change it to something over 9. I'm going to change it to 9 pi over 9, which is the same as pi. And um, is 5 pi over 9 closer to 0 or 9 pi over 9? And, and really, this is 0 pi over 9, if you wish. And so just think about 5. Is the number 5 closer to 0 or is the number 5 closer to 9? Closer to 9. Okay? It's closer to 9. So... So it's gonna is it gonna be in quadrant one or in quadrant two? All right. So somewhere in quadrant two, five pi over nine. And then the reference angle is this angle here, so we need to subtract five pi over nine from nine pi over nine, and we get four pi over nine. That's our referencing. So try the next one, 23 pi over 10. All right, so on this one, it's over 10. Um, so here's 0 on the x-axis. If I go half a circle, I'm at pi, which is, I want to make it over 10, so it's 10 pi over 10. I want 23 pi over 10, so I'm not close yet. So I'm going to go a full circle, which is 2 pi. But I need to make that over 10, so that's 20 pi over 10. I still haven't made it. So I've gone, I've gone around the circle once. And I need to go a little bit more. right? And uh, 23 pi is, is just 3 more. Um, so am I going to be in quadrant 1, or should I go to quadrant 2, or how do you know it's 1 and not 2? So I'm jumping by half a circle is 10 pi over 10, right? I'm only going 3 pi over 10. So it's closer here. So 3 pi over, so this is 23 pi over 10 right here. And for our reference angle, so we're in quadrant 1, we're going to subtract the 23 pi over 10 and the 20 pi over 10, and we end up with, 3 pi over 10. And that's what we were after. Okay. All right, do the next three problems. Okay, let's let's check what we have here. So 16 pi over 9. Uh, well, if this is 0, Half a circle is pi, but uh, change that to 9 pi over 9. And then go a full circle, which is 2 pi. But if you make that over 9, you're going to make it 18 pi over 9. 
And uh, so 16 pi over 9 is somewhere between 9 pi over 9 and 18 pi over 9. And so then we ask, well, which one is it closer to? 18 pi over 9. So we are going to be in quadrant 4. 16 pi over 9. You guys find that okay? And then our reference angle is the di positive difference between 16 pi over 9 and 18 pi over 9, which is 2 pi over 9. Okay. Uh, for the next one, we have a negative angle, which we're going the opposite direction. We're going this way. Um, so this is going to be negative pi or negative 5 pi over 5. And so is negative 3 closer to 0 or closer to negative 5? Negative 5, so we're going to be in quadrant 3 here. And uh, if we subtract them and get our positive difference, we should get a positive 2 pi over 5. Okay. And then our last one, pi over 2, but negative 5 pi over 2. So here is 0, and if I go half circle, uh, that's negative pi, which is negative 2 pi over 2. If I go another half circle. I'm counting by 2 pi over 2, so this would be negative 4 pi over 2. If I go another half circle, I'm going to be at negative 6 pi over 2. And we want negative 5 pi over 2. Is negative 5 pi over 2 closer to negative 4 pi over 2 or closer to negative 6 pi over 2? Or is it right in between? It's right in between. So negative 5 pi over 2 actually ends up on the negative y-axis. So it's not in quadrant 2, or 3, or 4, or 1. It's not in any quadrant on the negative x-axis. So you can make a little comment here. Um, falls on the negative x-axis. So we, we're not going to we're not going to use a reference angle because the reference angle is an acute angle, right? With the x-axis, we don't have that here. And so instead of using a reference angle, what we do is we use a point. Do you remember what point we use? Zero, negative one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did I say x? I said yes, it's the y-axis, not the x-axis. Thank you. That is called the y-axis, not the x-axis. That's correct. Okay. So that's finding a reference angle. That's finding where we are. So the big thing is it's a fraction. Get a common denominator. Okay. Um, Okay, next is asking, asking us to find the complement and the supplement of each angle. And uh, so this is not something we've been doing, um, but it's just an application. And a complement, we've done this before back in Math 2. What are, what are complementary angles? Two angles that add up to what? 90 degrees. So uh, angles are complements if they both add up to 90 degrees. So a, a complement would be an angle that um, if you add it with the one we have, you end up with, we're not working with degrees though. We're working with radians. So what would 90 degrees be in radians? Okay, so 90 degrees. Well, if 180 is pi, then 90 would be pi over 2. So 90 is the same thing as pi over 2. Okay. A supplement is, are t is an angle that helps, that adds up to 180, which would be pi. All right, so um, so on the first example here, I got pi over five, and so what I'm what I'm looking for here is um, pi over five 
plus what? I'll put at, or I should put C for complement. How about that? Plus our complement, C. That's a 5. Is equal to 90 degrees, which is pi over 2. And if we solve that for C, we find our complement. Okay. So another way to do that is to subtract. Our complement is going to be pi over 2 minus pi over 5. And whenever you add or subtract fractions, you need a common denominator. And so um, our common denominator is going to be 10. And so I'm going to multiply the first fraction by 5 over 5. And I get 5 pi over 10. I multiply the second fraction by 2 over 2 and get 2 pi over 10. And I end up with 3 pi over 10 as my complement. We go again a little fraction work for our supplement. It's going to work the same way. Our supplement, our angle pi over five plus the supplement is going to equal 180 degrees, but in radians that would be pi. And so uh, we want to subtract them. We want to find out what's pi minus pi over five. And this is really pi over 1 minus pi over 5. You need a common denominator. So 5 pi over 5 minus 1 pi over 5. And we end up with 4 pi over 5. And that's what we mean by complement and supplement. Let's try one more of these on our own. Let's do the last one. We'll skip the second one here. For pi over 6, find the find its complement and find its supplement. Okay, so here's what we should end up getting. Uh, our complement should be pi over 3. Our supplement should be 5 pi over 6. How do we do? Question on this? If you can reduce a fraction, always reduce a fraction, yeah. Did you end up with 2 pi over 6? Which is still correct. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Um, finding a coterminal angle. Okay. Coterminal, we, we defined that before. Uh, it's an angle that it, an angle is coterminal with another angle if they share the same terminal side, right? Or if they're pointed in the same direction. And uh, so, if I have some angle here, let me let me just use this as an example. So, say theta is pointed here, and we want to find another angle. Uh, how have we found another coterminal angle with degrees? What do we do? If I if I have an angle theta here, and I want to find another angle coterminal with it, what will I do? Add 360, right? So this, you know, theta plus 360 would be, I go a full circle, right? So, but we're not working with degrees now. We're working with radians. So instead of adding 360, what would you add? You'd say theta plus 2 pi. Okay. Or instead of subtracting 360, you would subtract 2 pi. So same idea, but we're just working with radians, right? So I want to look for a positive and a negative coterminal angle for each. Now, if 2 pi, I'm going to change it to something that has a common denominator. This is 2 pi over 1. But I want to make it something over 4. So 2 pi over 1 is the same thing as 8 pi over 4. It's a little easier to think of it that way now, because now I can add them and subtract them uh, with, without much, um, much thought, right? So 5 pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4 
gives us what? 13 pi over 4. And so that's a positive coterminal angle with 5 pi over 4. And to find the negative, I could start with 5 pi over 4 and subtract what? 8 pi over 4, which is the same thing as subtracting 2 pi. We get negative 3 pi over 4. And so that would be our negative coterminal angle. Okay, I'm going to skip this one. And do the next two. Okay, find a positive and a, and a negative coterminal angle for the next two. Okay, here's what you should get for uh, positive and negative coterminal angles. On, the, on 5 pi over 3, we add and we subtract the 6 pi over 3 which is the same as 2 pi, but I'm getting a common denominator. Because 2 pi is a full circle, or that 360 degrees. And for 3 pi over 2, we're going to add and subtract 4 pi over 2, which is, again, equivalent to 2 pi. And uh, any questions on these? Okay. All right, so that's the new stuff with, uh, with radians. Okay? Um, that's that's how we find radiance.